Erupted lower third molars are some of the easiest teeth to remove in the mouth and some of the most difficult teeth to remove in the mouth, <laughs> just like any other tooth. Now, the thing is, as we move posteriorly, we need to remember that the access for these gets more difficult, visibility gets more difficult, and we're getting closer to some of the vital structures in the jaw. Now, these are important things to know because if we run into complications, things can be a little bit more difficult to deal with and maybe a little more serious. So we need to have good confidence, we need to be very comfortable extracting teeth before we get into this type of extraction. So we're going to look at how we do this right away in this video. The first thing to look at is we need a good pan or a good PA to show us where that nerve canal is in relation to the roots of that tooth. Typically we're in the clear when they're erupted like this, but we still want to be sure and we want to make sure we can see the entire apex of that tooth. Now, as we get going on this, what we're going to do is we're going to start with our periosteal elevator. And again, we want to stay fairly clear of the lingual tissues throughout this extraction. Don't crush the tissues. Make sure you have good visibility when you're placing a forcep or when you're poking with your periosteal. We want to start on the buckle right between the third molar and second molar. I will often use the concavity of that periosteal in this direction to sink it in between the teeth and pry away and that will move the papilla away from the bone to allow you to get your elevator deeper in between these teeth and allow you to prevent the crushing of that tissue as you begin to elevate on that tooth. Now we're going to encircle the tooth with this periosteal so basically we're going to be going all the way around pushing to bone making sure that we're severing all those PDL fibers that we can access with this instrument. Once we've done that we're then going to move to our elevator. This is the ELSX3 elevator. I love it. I use it all the time. It's a luxating elevator, so it has a very thin tip on it, which allows me to use it like a luxator, working it apically down the root, or as an elevator where I can be more perpendicular to the tooth. It's a great instrument. You can apply excessive forces to these because you will chip them. I've got a few in my kits where I've done that, and you get a feel for it over time. So there's no right or wrong elevator to use here. Just use what you're comfortable with. This is what I happen to use. So we've reflected our papilla, we're going to start elevating. We want to get good access back here. We're going to insert and try to get a purchase on the mesial aspect of that tooth. So it can be the mesial buccal, it could be the mesial lingual, or straight mesial, wherever you can get to. And you're going to start twisting that elevator a little bit and pushing as you move deeper. So as you move deeper, what I'm usually doing is I'm usually rotating the top edge of that elevator toward the tooth. Now, the reason that I do that is I try to keep the bottom edge on the bone and I try to use the top edge to lever on the tooth to get it moving. When I do that, I'm kind of avoiding leaning back on the adjacent tooth. So I tend to get less leverage off the adjacent tooth when I move in that direction. The final motion of elevation, once things are loose, typically then I will rotate it up and sort of away from the tooth to lift it out of the socket. So that's something to keep in mind. It also protects that adjacent tooth. So we're going to start working at this. Lots of times you'll get these lifted a little bit. So you're kind of working in this direction. We are making this motion. We're moving apically and we're kind of twisting and moving almost anteriorly, I guess, with our hand as well. So we're doing this motion. And as we do that, we're getting deeper and deeper in there. We start to lift the tooth, but maybe it's not coming. What do we do next? The next thing that we do is we can take this thin edge of this elevator, and now that we have a little bit of clearance between the tooth and that buccal shelf of bone, which is so sturdy, look at all that bone there, we're going to insert it in that buccal groove, and we're going to begin to push down in there until we get another purchase, and then we can lift from the buccal aspect of that tooth, and most times this is all we need to deliver that tooth out through the lingual. Now, this is an easy way to do it. It gets you in under the frication of that tooth to lift it out. If we have elevated and elevated and we're not getting much for movement and things are pretty stiff, maybe the tooth's lifting a bit but not coming out, we can then move to our forcep. And our forcep that we would typically use back here, or that I typically use, is the 222 forcep. Now I like the 23 cow horn typically for molars, and I will use it if I have a patient that can open really wide. But this forcep has quite an angulation to the the teeth, I guess, or to the jaws of the forcep. Now, that allows us to get good access back there. The patient doesn't have to open as wide as with the cow horn, and it can grip very tightly on that tooth. And lots of times these teeth may have conical roots or, or maybe not be bifurcated, 
and we don't always have an area for the cow horn to sink into. So what we'll do is we'll apply this on our tooth after we've elevated a bit, and now we've got good leverage on there. I'll often use that underhand grip where you can then start to move and lean it in both directions, buccolingual, and begin our rotations, and then we can typically deliver this tooth either to the buccal or the lingual. Most times molars will deliver to the lingual because you can see the difference in the bone. The buccal bone is so thick, the lingual is so thin that you'll usually have it coming to the lingual. Doesn't matter, just make sure that you're not forcing it. You will feel as you get going which way that tooth wants to come out.